everyone. We are beginning up with our industry insight session and the topic says intellectual property and data management consideration for petrochemical companies and in-house perspective, building it from the ground up. We have our eminent speaker joining me, Zayed Hati from his partner, head of intellectual property at Norton Rose Fulbright. So over to you. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank you, IPR. Uh, Gorilla for uh, allowing me to speak here and, and uh, thank you to the audience for uh, for coming to hear me. Uh, so just a little bit about background about myself. Uh, again, I'm a lawyer. Um, I spent some a lot of time in-house uh, and I developed basically a model uh, where we can build an IP infrastructure and I'm going to share some of that with you uh, briefly uh, today. Uh, so the, 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 the number one thing to remember uh, is that, you know, what, what is it that you need to do? So you can either, if you don't have it set up already, you can build it, or if you have an infrastructure, you can restructure it, transform it, or improve and, and optimize it. Uh, but when it comes to IP, you, you always have to start out from the company vision, right? So the, the company vision uh, can be, you know, maintaining status quo, right? And, and that's maintaining your business. Uh, because when it comes to the IP, it's really it's there to support the business uh, and to support the, the, the vision of the company. And that could be you're either protecting your, your assets, you could be monetizing it, or you could be leveraging it to increase uh, profits, for example. Uh, or it could be you know, your company vision can be in a growth mode. Uh, it can be diversification, uh, localizing opportunities, divestment, transformation, digitalization, restructuring, uh, developing technology or, or importing or leveraging third-party technology. So there's a variety of, of things that the company could be doing and a variety of visions that it may have and strategies. So that's, that's the first step, generally. Then you have to look at your company business, right? So we're going to focus on on the pet chem business uh, in this particular uh, scenario. Uh, so, so what is your business? It could be in the feedstock, right? So that could be in the extraction uh, of of gas, oil, coal, etc. You could be an alternative feedstock, alternative energy, etc. Uh, or, or it could be that, or in addition to. Uh, the manufacturing, right? So you could be, uh, that's mainly building plants, uh, operating plants, maintaining plants, revamp revamping them, etc. Uh, it could be in the material or supply into the manufacturing process. Uh, and you could be producing a number of different uh, uh, products. It could be in chemicals, metals, fertilizer, polymers, plastics. Uh, specialty products, etc., and each of those will require its own nuances when it comes to how you uh, develop technology or how to utilize technology and how you protect it. You could also be, of course, in in the energy and waste management. Uh, yeah, that's you know the, you're going to have byproducts. You're going to have products that are like, for example, plastics. Uh, that you that you, this, there'll be a need instead of single sort single use. Uh, you want to start recycling them. Uh, there's you know, the, the feedstock, which is the gas and oil. Usually that's 85% of the raw material. But in addition to that, there is also the the energy that goes to operate those. And, and that could be, you know, the energy could be burning gas, but instead you may want to uh, look at renewable energy, electrification, etc. And then eventually you're going to produce these products and they're going to go into end applications. So that could be your business as well. Now, when you're setting it up or you're restructuring, transforming, or improving it, you also need to know how your company is set up because there's going to be an interaction of, of the, the IP, the technology, as well as the data, and you want to make sure that those protections are in place. Uh, your company will have business units. Those are the marketing and sales. Uh, you'll have the technology and innovation, and you may have a, a separate research and development. Uh, department. There's going to be engineering and project management. Uh, you could have, you know, the, you could be, uh, man, you could have a manufacturing department. There's going to be marketing and sales, supply chain, procurement, finance, uh, information technology, human resources, corporate communication. Again, legal. All those you want. You want to get an idea of the, those different business structures and how they're interacting together. 
uh, you, you could have a bunch of different affiliates and that you want to make sure there's agreements in place to, to manage some of the technology and the data transfer. Uh, and as well, you need to think about are these local or are they global organizations and affiliates? Uh, and then eventually, this is where you know we get into the, the main uh, idea, the, the technology. Uh, what does technology mean? You could be using technology in different ways. So one of the ways uh, that you're looking at technology, you could be buying it or licensing it in. Uh, so we, 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 we can bucket that in, into one uh, category. The other way technology plays a part is where you have your, your engineers or uh, your scientists uh, supporting existing manufacturing plants, uh, processes, etc. Uh, another way uh, to do that is develop your own technology. And the, the reason why you want to break it out, because each of those will have its own nuance. Uh, and depending on what you're doing, for example, when you're developing your own technology, a lot of that is going to be covered by confidentiality, trade secrets, or it's going to be proprietary. And if you're licensing in at the same time, if those are competing, then you can have contamination issues. So you need to learn how to manage that. The other part of how you're using your technology and your expertise is by customer support, right? So you, you have, you're producing certain products. Uh, so for example, in, in the polymer or, or, or specialty products, your customer is going to have certain uh, requirements, demands. You want to use your your technology group uh, to help support that customer, right? And that can be in the, on the service side as well, uh, from from a process uh, perspective. Uh, you you could also be looking at uh, you know the, the using uh, technology on the uh, for environmental and regulatory purposes. Uh, these days, a lot of regulations are coming out. Uh, it, it could be based on litigation. Uh, it could be based on uh, customer uh, needs that you, you, need, you need to have a more environmentally friendly uh, and sustainable uh, process or products. And, and you need to use technology to, to help leverage that. And, and of course, the digitalization, and that has a whole variety of different uh, considerations and technologies that you need to to go into. Uh, so you know what what should you do from a legal side? So basically, you've you've mapped out your business, you've mapped out your structure, uh, and you've mapped out here are my priorities when it comes to technology, and this is how I'm going to uh, utilize them. So then you you basically look at your your existing structures, right? Or if you're building new ones, you need to map map those out and create a framework. Uh, when it comes to uh, you know the, the agreements that are put in place or the systems that are put in place that communicate with each other, uh, and that take it from one step you know from from early on uh, research and development to commercialization, then you you need to kind of review uh, those systems, uh, especially when it comes to the data protection. Uh, you're going to have IT systems uh, that uh, that allow you to communicate. You're going to have IT systems that help you store that information, uh, and you need to make sure that all those are secure from uh, from a cybersecurity perspective, but also from a legal perspective as well. Uh, because the most important thing is you need to before you disclose or share uh, or or uh, uh, communicate any information, you need to make sure you have the right protections in place. Then uh, uh, basically review those, those uh, establish or review those protections and make sure that they're uh, they're they're efficient enough to to uh, for your for your practice for your business to to move forward, uh, right? You don't want to create encumbrances. You want to you want to facilitate uh, the business, but making sure you have the right protections in place. Uh, and to do that, you'll you know you you start off from the policy level, so you've mapped out everything. You know what your needs are. You know how your systems work. You develop the policies, uh, then develop the procedures to apply those policies. Then the workflows, tools, templates, etc. Uh, you know, one of the things I like to put up front is you know for a business, if you really want to protect your technology and information. Presume everything is is confidential. 
and uh, you know don't disclose or share that information unless you've taken the right clearances uh, so the you know most people want to share information right away so clear those if it's not confidential and it's not proprietary you know have a mechanism in place to clear those and you can publish disclose present etc uh, you know having the right due diligence uh, freedom to operate is also essential early on because you don't want to get into the you know you don't want to buy technology or you don't want to implement technology and then you know see that someone else has rights that they can stop you from from utilizing it uh, make sure what you know you have the right agreements in place uh, the right drafts negotiate them well review and even after you sign them review and manage them well uh, you need to know what you signed up to and you need to know what your rights are what your obligations are and those are things that you you, you know not only uh, the legal department has to know that, but that has to be carried on to manufacturing, to technology, to the business, etc. And of course, then you have your traditional IP protections, the, the trademarks, the copyrights, the trade secrets, and then patents, right? In the patents, you want to make sure that, one, you're, you're capturing the inventions that requires uh, researcher training, uh, and then you have the right mechanism and filing, uh, how to file, where to file, uh, etc. Uh, you also want to be looking at what your competitors are doing. So those, you know, you could do patent alerts. Uh, then when you see the, you know, certain patents that, that your competitors are about to uh, uh, get allowed, uh, you want to make sure that you want to oppose them early on uh, because you don't want them to get the patents to stop you from your business as well. Um, and of course, uh, you know, you want to manage the portfolio, uh, balance the cost and balance uh, the, the benefits and, and monitor uh, when you your patents as well to make sure that no one's infringing them. Because at the end of the day, if you're not monitoring them, you're not getting the right value out of them. So basically, I, you know, this is, you know, my time is up. So uh, uh, this kind of gives you an overall a picture of, of how you want your business to be focused and how you want it to be structured, especially when it comes to the IP, uh, because at the end of the day, having that clear picture will, will greatly increase the value of your technology and your IP. So thanks again, IP Gorilla. It's been great talking to you, and I look forward to the other sessions. Thank you, Zaya. Thanks for a very wonderful presentation, I would say. And this is a topic which is very much trending nowadays. So I, I would appreciate if we have any question for him. So we can take one question very quickly. So if anybody would like to ask a question, they can write down on the chat box on the right. Or they can also come face to face and ask and meet Zayed Al Hatri. So uh, looking forward to have any one question from any one attendees. And if you have any follow-up questions, please, um, you know, my, my profile on LinkedIn is there. Feel Absolutely. free to, to reach out and, and ask anything. Absolutely. Uh, and Mr. Zayed is available for the whole day conference and we'll be glad to have his participation. So uh, you can also schedule a meeting with them. So we have one question very quickly. What jurisdiction do, do, you, do you patent in your industry? That's the question. So, so, so from, and I get in any industry, uh, if you were looking at manufacturing and you're looking at sales, basically you want a patent definitely where you're manufacturing, if it's on the process side or the product side. And then on the on the product side, you want to you want to file where you're going to be selling, uh, because at the end of it, and then if you know if you don't have a market, uh, and, and if you're not selling in certain jurisdictions, then, then you know there's not really a need, or your competitors uh, as well. There's no need to do it. So. Always think about yourself. Where is my manufacturing? Where is my products going to be sold? Where my competitors are, and that gives you a nice roadmap of uh, of what countries you should be filing in. Thank you so much, Zayed, and I hope Derek, you got your answer for the question. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.